Unless you've been living under a rock, you must know what's been happening at the universities in U.S. These past few weeks, we've witnessed barbaric acts against our academic institutions, intimidation of Jewish students, and a complete lack of respect for both the authorities and the very essence of our campuses. These places were always meant for reflection and dialogue from different points of view. But now, things have taken a turn for the worse. In several cases, the catatonic response of the university administration has encouraged these protesters to escalate their tactics, including the destruction of property, physical violence against students, seizure of buildings, and even holding university staff against their will. Chants in support of Hamas, the Houthis, Iran, bombing Israel, and general terrorist action have been the consistent soundtrack in the background of all these protests. The synchronized eruption of these protests, the use of common talking points, and well-oiled logistics surrounding the supply of sleeping arrangements, food, water, and medical support for the protesters have raised red flags surrounding the organization and funding for this spontaneous phenomenon. And of course, with just a little digging, the evidence was everywhere. It quickly became clear that several groups were showing up at almost every protest, well-equipped, organized, and always ready for action. Let's just say they didn't look like amateurs. And just this week, some media outlets are starting to uncover the first signs that behind many of the main groups vandalizing campuses, there are prominent figures from the business world and philanthropists pulling the strings. But let's take a look at what's being reported. According to a Politico analysis, the protests at Columbia University and other campuses have the backing of several organized groups, but one stands out. Jewish Voice for Peace. This is a U.S.-based political organization that refers to itself as the Jewish wing of the Palestinian Solidarity Movement and receives support from a significant Democratic donor. Guess who? The usual number one suspect, of course. George Soros. Let's be real, no one's surprised, right? And in second place, we have another familiar face. David Rockefeller Jr., a big-time Democratic supporter, is one of the guys whose generosity is backing the protest movement. He's on the board for the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, and they've handed over close to $500,000 straight to Jewish Voice for Peace, which explicitly describes itself as anti-Zionist. Another guy, maybe not as famous but super active in these kind of things, is Sheldon Kafan, Amazon's first employee. Through his Kafan Foundation, he donated 441,000 bucks to these ill-mannered kids. Kafan Foundation, it's a pretty liberal organization that gives money to all sorts of left-leaning causes, including Planned Parenthood and groups trying to get rid of the Electoral College. According to Politico, several other groups involved in pro-Palestinian protests are backed by a foundation funded by Susan and Nick Pritzker, heir to the Hyatt Hotel Empire, and supporters of Biden and numerous Democratic campaigns. To be totally upfront with you, at least when it comes to the Pritzker family, I get the feeling they don't even know where their donation is going. I mean, they are descendants of Jews. But as protester tactics have grown more intense, like taking over university buildings and shouting anti-Semitic remarks, the groups behind them are now attracting criticism from prominent donors on the left. According to Jewish News Syndicate analysis, there has also been an undeniable influx of money from overseas into the most prestigious universities in America, which may explain both the radicalization of the student protests, and the soft response from the administration. For almost 20 years, a central player in this development has been Qatar. In 2020, American author and translator Raymond Ibrahim published a report showing that Qatar had invested $5.6 billion in 81 American universities since 2007, including Harvard, Yale, Cornell, and Stanford. Raymond Ibrahim further showed that Qatar used its influence at the schools to promote Islamic studies and to specifically suppress the study of other Middle Eastern minorities, including Christians, Jews, and others. 
The demonstrations at universities have emerged as a thorn in Biden's side, who has finally spoken out on the matter. Destroying property is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law, Biden said. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduation, none of this is a peaceful protest. Biden's got his work cut out for him trying to win back the young crowd. They were all in for him back in 2020. But these protests, they're not making things any easier. And with Israel getting flack from all over the place because of the civilian toll in Gaza, it's a tough spot. Keeping in mind that the number of deaths is given by the Gaza health minister who belongs to the Hamas terrorist group, okay? The liability for Biden could be more pronounced if the protests continue throughout the summer and fall as the election draws closer. And if that happens, you can bet someone's going to be rubbing their hands together in glee.